spoil, we will buy him a new one. If his car spoil, we will repair his car. That's why we are here. Let us just continue to do what we are doing. Don't, don't mind them. You know? But maybe not all of them. Okay? So currently, Tifnumbu is operating concurrently three different budgets. 2023 budgets. 2023 supplementary budgets. 2024 budgets. And right now, Tifnumbu is asking for Another 2024 supplementary budget. If you like seeing a two two budget, you will not get the sorry two two or three three budgets. You are going to get. You will be getting every year now. There is one of them who kind of feel like, well, we need to say it. This is not right. Now this is honourable. Among them, among all of them, of the 2023 budget, it's also coming with an application for extension of the supplementary budget for 2023. We understand the implication. From the letter we received, it is mainly, in fact, only on capital projects. And we cannot ask that capital projects should be abandoned. We cannot also deny our country, which by implication means denying ourselves the benefits of capital projects. So, in principle, we might not oppose this. I might not oppose this in principle because I want this project concluded. But in terms of procedure, I feel a little bit worried. A situation where we have three budgets running concurrently. And then we're also expecting sincerely a supplementary budget for 2024, which means that we have four budgets running in a country simultaneously. You will also recall that one of the major criticism against the PDP government was that we had no clear budgetary period and so that we are returning to the era of January to December budget. But today we are having not just 24 months, not just 12 months, but 24 months budget cycle. And so whilst I would say that yes, it is in the interest of the country that these projects be concluded, but this process and procedure might not appear to be completely correct. In criticizing this, we will not just criticize, but provide an alternative, sir. And therefore, I will suggest that the House leader steps down this bill, and then we go back to the drawing board. Look at it. All the projects that are contained in 2023 budget and 2023 supplementary budget. We take them over to the 2024 supplementary budget so that we can have just two budgets running in the country. That way, we would have achieved everything that we intend to achieve. If we have all the capital projects in 2023 that is not concluded and 2024. That's my submission, sir. I know somehow some of you who have been following the development in Kenya, you probably have been seeing the similarity between the politicians in Kenya and the politicians in Nigeria, the lawmakers in Kenya and the lawmakers in Nigeria, the Kenyans and Nigerians. Right. Some people felt right now in Nigeria, I'll share you get why some sorry, why some people are still contemplating when the day of reckoning will be for these rogues in Kenya. Eh, they've already taken their own uh, politicians to the cleaners all over the country. Then their president Ruto that withdrew. Uh, the controversial finance bill, but he's a politician, typical one, a liar, a very, very terrible one at that. He probably felt so slighted, belittled, his ego somehow bruised. So, on the one hand, he's calling for unity peace and reconciliation let's sit down and talk on another hand he's promising them revenge 
for those who had the audacity to stand up against uh, the government. And because of that, the Kenyans who took to the street and said, he has to go. That's a typical politician, so powerful. He's I'm powerful. I'm the president. I can see anything. Is doubling down. And as a typical Nigerian voluntary slaves, some of them are already getting tired for Kenya protests. Can you even imagine? You are inside a contraption called Nigeria, living through the hell, hoping that the Messiah, one Messiah will come from some, I don't know, or your sky daddy is coming, coming to come and save you or whatever, I don't know. Then you started seeing people who are taking their destiny into their own hands, facing their fear, and they said they would rather die on their feet than to feed or survive on their knees. Nigerians don't they complain online that today. They are already overdue now. Is this not enough? Eh? Is that not enough? The, the, the man said he has withdrawn the, the bill. Why are they still protesting? Why are they still this or that? Look at them looting. Oh, they have started looting. That's what they want for Nigeria. That is why all these people that want to bring revolution to Nigeria. Eh? God no go allow you. This is the prayer of the ombud slaves. Sophisticated morons. The Buaridins. The Buarididerins. The Buaridinotus. The Buaridijatus. The Buarishukus. The Ungoziaris. The Unekaharis. The ombud slaves, the sophisticated morons, including those ones who have now metamorphosed to what you have today, oh, the Lagos Abobakus, the Oshogbu Alimajiris, the bad stars, the bad idiots, the Jaga addicts, the Jaga bandits, and the rest of them. That is their prayer. All of you who want to think in revolution for Nigeria, you want to burn this country. God will not, we will start, we will defend Nigeria. We will, uh, Olori Brook will not get food for Bele. Hungry sewage dweller that have access to his own Shinko imported phone, right? Is bragging. He's tired. He's uh, possibly, uh, you know, distressed, looking at Kenyans, not giving up, not giving space, demanding that person wait on gun on them and kill them. He must also face IC, ICC. I never actually knew. Daruto is an ICC wanted uh, politician. I didn't know. I did know. I just didn't know that it is still active. Ruto has been involved in different kind of uh, you know, political upheaval and killings in Kenya he is one of those wanted by the ICC. Now, the reason why Ruto could fly everywhere and align with the US and all this West and all of that is that uh, they could protect him from whoever is going to arrest him if he landed in any wrong country. He is the president of Kenya. He was supposed to build a goodwill. Some people defended him against this ICC, I mean, ICC uh, caught in Hague. War crime, oh, crime against humanity, oh. All of that are coming out now, all of that. And guess what? The same Ruto, who continues to use his own uh, harmed killers, who goes after into suburbs, threatening people, kidnap people on the road, on the streets, and stuff like that. I think I even have a clip of one person kidnapped. This one is a politician, oh. Right? And the second video is that of how people have now started reacting, even to Ruto himself. Watch this one. I think it's this. A fellow politician that is believed is like a Sifnumbu kidnapping. Which poly? Ireti, that uh, FCT senator. Because she's saying something. Then Sifnumbu or Wiri Wiki just ordered that they should go and pick her up. That's exactly what is happening in this video.
alikuwa ana alikuwa amekosa huyu alafu madam kada alikuwa amekosa <laughs> went to a few places he's been to. That's how he's been mobbed. Ruto. In Kenya. You killed Kenyans. Ruto, you killed Kenyans. On top of the bill that you are still going to withdraw. You probably knew you were going to withdraw the bill. But you probably felt like maybe if you kill a few of them and chase them out of the streets, they will stop asking. And then you can just sign it. And everybody will just have to go and live with it. A typical ombud slaves, voluntary slave from Nigeria. They don't they do too much. Instead of don't destroy your country, do, do, instead of you to sit down, the president said he wants to talk to you. What do you want to tell them? What is he going to tell those killed? They said they don't want him anymore. And it is actually like a unanimous. So the guy said, I do not have any blood on my hand. People said I have blood on my, but I don't. I have no blood on my hands. 19 people to the record that I have from the security agencies are dead. That is a madman. Okay? He said he had a report that only 19 people have been killed. And their blood, they are not on his hands. Ruto. I have no blood on my hands. 19 people to the record that I have from the security agencies are dead. Very unfortunate. Um, as a democracy, that should not be part of our conversation. <laughs> 2.4 billion of property has been destroyed. The office of the Chief Justice has been burnt. City Hall has been burnt. Parliament has been burnt. Let, that that let, is let, the let's, situation. Let's turn so lives. Let's turn lives. Have, let, let's turn um, lives, Your Excellency. 19 let's people turn lives, dead. Your Excellency. We have nine. Did you see his reaction when he spoke about the 19 people dead? And he said, that is not part of our conversation or part of our discussion. Then 2.5 billion worth of properties have been vandalized, looted. His countenance changed right away. His face stiffed up. Eh? But as a, as a politician, he kind of wanted to try to kind of, I'll show you, watch it again. That's what I want you to see. A mean, cold-hearted rogue. And I want to see how far who is going to shift first between him and these young people in Kenya. I have no blood on my hands. 19 people to the record that I have from the security agencies are dead. Very unfortunate. Um, as a democracy, that should not be part of our conversation. 2.4 billion of property has been destroyed. 
The office of the Chief Justice has been burnt. City Hall has been burnt. Parliament has been burnt. Let, that that let, is let, the let's, situation. Let's turn so lives. Let's turn lives. We have let, let's turn um, lives, your 19 let's people turn lives, dead. Your, your and while speaking to church leaders that agreed to meet with him, he needed the church to preach to the people and say they should calm down, they should forgive him, they should listen to him. And in fact, there are already some churches, young people from some churches in China, I mean in Kenya, who have accepted that, well, he should extend the invitation to them. They would like to represent the, their own area and church at that meeting. While others are like, we're not sitting with you. There's not going to be any dialogue. Forget it. Ruto was still threatening Kenyans while, trying, while speaking to the church leaders that he wanted to actually use in the long run to placate the country. Listen to this. Nani waombe, hawa vijana wetu tuwaongeleshe. Hawana makosa ni kukosa namna. Lakini as parents, as leaders, as church leaders, as political leaders, mimi na hui wabombi. Sote tuungane, tuungeleshe hawa vijana, tupange vizuri, ili waelewe we, are, we have a plan for them. Na mimi sila umu vijana wa Kenya. And nilisema ya kwamba hawa vijana wamefanya vizuri wamekuja wamesema tuko na maneno yetu hapa na walikuwa wanafanya hivyo kwa utaratibu na amani na walikuwa wanafanya hivyo bila ya kuchanganya na mambo ya ukabila which is very positive lakini ndani ya hapo wakaingiliwa na watu wengine wale waliochoma bunge sio hawa watoto Sindio? Sio watoto hao wetu. Wale walienda kuchoma mabunge ni criminals. Ambao tutawatafuta. Hawawezi kuhepa. Kwa sababu huwezi kuharibu mali ya umma. Tutaongea na vijana wetu. Tuko na mpango ya vijana wetu. Lakini wahalifu, wakora na hawa criminals pia tutashughuliki, tutawashughulikia. Eh? Kulingana na sheria Hakuna vile mtu anaweza kwenda kuharibu biashara ya mwingine. Kuharibu biashara ya mwingine, kuvunja mali ya umma, kuharibu biashara, kuharibu eh, eh, manyumba ya serikali, kwenda kuchoma CDF office, kwenda kuchoma sijui nini. Hiyo itatusaidia na mambo yetu ya kusuluhisha matatizo ya vijana kwa njia gani. So we must separate the issues our young people are raising and the criminality of those who are looting people's shops, destroying public property, these are very separate issues and we must deal with them as they are. And that's all he needs. All of you that uh, invaded the Supreme Court invaded the parliament, invaded government buildings in what you call your protest, you are criminals. And you will receive the Sharia. You will be dealt with. We will deal with them. So it considers, right, the uh, breaking into the parliament as a sacrilege that everyone who is part of that. And these are the young people who in their protests, right, pushed straight into the parliament to stop them from passing a bill that will put all of them in perpetual poverty. And they will be punished for it, according to Ruto. So to them, one, you need to release everyone that you have locked up first. If you want to have a, a, a dialogue, a chat, you need to call back all your police and then uh, other secret police that are killing people, kidnapping them from the suburb. And when we see all of this, right, then you write your resignation letter. And that's what we are going to be sitting together to read. You will read it to us. That's the only meeting they want to have with him. So today, it has been, you know, all over the country, it has been 
hectic. I'm not going to give you much of the videos from that. Okay, let's go back to Niger. Right? On our way to Niger, we saw a guy caught by the NDLEA. Agbalagba, Tungbe, Tungbe Cocaine. My name is Aikomo Dana, AK, Olada, Olada, Waju. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. 33, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, let us be honest. That man is just a, a carrier. Abi, all of that 90 raps. I don't know the story you have heard about drug trafficking, cocaine. But do you think all of that rap of cocaine on the table, 90 raps, can make that man a multimillionaire? Because I remember... This is me now, again, you're trying to preach to those of you who are going to blame poverty or blame other things, financial problem, a Nigeria situation, or the devil for why you are allowing yourself to be used as, the, as a drug mule. You will never be rich, ever. And if you are caught, eh, your life is done for. Do you think that rap of uh, cocaine, rap like that, even if the guy is not, a, uh, is not a courier, like a carrier, let's say he wants to go and sell it in the UK, and then it can just come to the UK, 90 raps of cocaine, and then do you think that is going to make him a billionaire? Or he has to keep doing it and keep doing it, keep carrying 90 rap, 100 rap, or until when he can be able to carry a container? Then imagine you, that is just a courier. You are not even the owner of the drug. Somebody convinced you at your age. Ah, we have a job for you. We'll give you five million naira. You had five million naira. And they say, it's just to go to Dubai. It's just to go to this. It's just to go to that. Eh? Drug pushing. Like, if you want to push drug, you're supposed to go watch the drug uh, cartel movie. Get container, be creative. Eh? Something that if one batch of your of your shipment land, it is either it's going to attract a CIA or anybody that will be looking for you. But you know that it's going to be some amount of money that can actually keep you away from those looking for you. Engbebo ninety rapu. She poverty no look for any. Eh? So those of you who are so lucky enough that they, you are caught in Nigeria, you don't know, you don't know what thing God do for you. That's your sky daddy. Oh, save when you, if you carry cocaine, if you are carrying drug as a drug meal for all these drug pushers, drug dealers. See, poverty, to enter Nigeria, you know, naked poverty, they work out for for Nigeria. A lot of people are living the fake life. To maintain it, they are the easy recruits, the easy recruits for all kinds of crime and criminal underworld. You will be recruited into human trafficking, organ trafficking, drug trafficking, because you are looking for a way out. You want to get away from what Nigeria they do to you right now. Drug, crime, 
So you will be lucky oh, if to say like China, then catch die bon, I will learn here. Yeah. Me in family members, everybody made them forget say, that this kind of person ever existed in their family. Oh, to oh, learn here. Yeah. So why would you? I mean, I, I don't I don't understand not the devil. Oh now my friend deceived me. Shot dead near me. The one they see me, you may you swallow cocaine inside the hotel to go to Saudi, swallow cocaine to go to Singapore. Shot dead near me. You are just a courier. You are just a carrier, right? They go pay you. If any, if once, if single one 